Hey. Hello. Hi, uh, we're having some technical problems. If you guys could just uh, bear with us. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Brum River Art Center. Um, I'm here with Tom Pace, and we're so excited that you've joined us today for our poinsettia painting. So um, I'll take you through step by step. I'll show you some of the supplies that I'm going to use. And we're just so happy that you guys are all here today. Um, God, I think we've got about 20 people, don't we, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. So um, we'll just walk through step by step and get started on our painting today. We've got a lot of classes coming up in January if you're interested. There's um, some pottery classes, drawing. Watercolor has two more spots and that'll be it for the winter class. Um, but there's lots of other really fun things coming up. So check out the website and we'd love to see you. So yeah, so we'll get started and Tom will make it so that you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm looking down right onto the painting and to the examples that I have for you. So okay. welcome and we'll get started. And okay. everybody, don't forget to pin your videos, please. Oh, good. We're good. All right, you guys. Let's see here. Let's get situated. All right. Um, I found this, this uh, calendar. I think it's beautiful photograph of um, poinsettias. And we're looking, actually looking down on them. And we're thinking about these beautiful plants. They're actually, it's sort of interesting. I was reading a bit about it and the center here is really the, the flower part and these are leaves. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but they're called bracts, B-R-A-C-T-S. And so those are the leaves that um, grow out from the star center. And so we'll be drawing these today. Um, I want to show you, oh, that's better. Thank you. I want to show you a couple of samples. This is a little one that I did, a quickie. Um, and I thought that was kind of fun to show you. And then I did a it's little, watching. I think somebody's chatting. Anyway, I did this little step-by-step -step, um, way to draw these that might be helpful. You know, because not everybody um, is used to doing a lot of drawing, but I will take you through this step by step as we draw onto our watercolor paper. Um, 
I am using this Darka set that we have here at the Art Center for sale if you choose to use this. This is nice. I also have my Princeton um, brush. This is a number 10 Elite and I've been loving this particular brush. You can get these at Michael's, <laughs> just saying. And then this is a, a watercolor um, palette that I like to use and I've got my two paints here that I often use. So um, I've also got a pencil and I just have an HP pencil and I have a kneaded eraser but I don't know where it is. It's around here somewhere because I usually need my eraser. So I'll find it. Um, anyway, so we're going to be starting with the center of the flower and we're going to draw these little tiny yellow blossoms that you can see in the photograph here. Okay, there, there are several, several of them clumped together and then we'll draw five of the smaller leaf shapes here. Okay, and we'll build it and grow it outward. Now, I probably will do mine freehand. In other words, I'll paint it without drawing it, but you can certainly draw yours before you paint. So I might do sort of a little combination of the two. Okay, so if you want to practice first, you could do that. That might be good. Um, let's just do that real quick, do a little practice drawing. I'm gonna move that away. Here's a piece of scrap paper. And I'm just gonna start with a little, a few little of these um, flower center shapes. These are little yellow, tiny little blossoms that are in the center of the poinsettia. And then I'm gonna think about the five small ones. It's sort of like a star. And in fact, this plant. Don is trying to get in, excuse me. He's trying to get in. Somebody's trying to get in? Yeah. Waiting for the host. Yeah, I, I've been clicking on it. Oh. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Did he get in this time? Yeah, here he is. Okay. Great. Welcome. There I'm in. Hi there. Okay. So um, what I've done is I'm just doing a little practice drawing here. I did my center little blossoms. And then I'm creating sort of like a little star design where I'm going to be um, doing my smallest uh, leaf shapes. So you can leave the line that you that I drew if you want to, but I'm just going to do some little leaf shapes here. I don't know if you guys can see this. I hope you can. I'm going to press kind of hard with my pencil. Okay, that's where I'm starting. And then I'm going to build it by creating some more of these um, leaf shapes between the ones that I just drew. Okay, and they're a little bit bigger and they might scoot a bit behind the ones that I initially drew. So it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so very simple. Um, then once those are done, I'm going to make some bigger ones in between here. And of course, they don't need to all be the same. They can be different shapes a little bit. And they're not going to be, um, they're going to be different so that it makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing. And then we can add some of the leaves that are green here. Okay, and those are going to come around wherever you want to put them. Okay, I put five of them. Okay, so there's my drawing and that helps me know where I'm going to head with this painting. Now you can draw this onto your watercolor paper if you choose to, or you can just sort of wing it like I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to paint it freehand, I think. Okay. So here's the steps again. I'm going to leave it up for a sec. And you can spend a few minutes being organized. Get your um, paper ready, watercolor paper ready. I'm going to work on this, um, this sheet here, I think. And get your paints ready. You're going to need some water. And you're going to need a little tissue uh, or a Kleenex or something like that for wiping your um, brush on. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you, Tom. Okay. I might do a couple of these, and so I'll do one maybe where I do a bit of drawing, and then one where I just um, paint it without drawing. And you could actually do a couple of these on your paper, that'd be fine. <clears throat> we're going to work from light to dark. So we're going to have to do a bit of painting around things. We're going to be sort of cutting in around our shapes um, and gradually get darker I see if turn as we look along here. Okay, Gradually getting darker. So we're going to start with a light wash. We've got some kids taking a class in the studio next door to where I'm working here. So just so you know, if you're hearing a bunch of children laughing and having a good time, that's what's going on. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be starting. I'm just going to show you. Um, there's that other brush. Okay, I'm just going to show you a brush stroke using, I'm using sap green. If you're using this palette here, you can just grab the, some green right from there. And I'm going to just show you a brush stroke that I'll be using. Okay, so I'm moving my brush like this and like that. Okay, for the green leaves. Once this dries, I can always go back over it and add the veins in side here. I'm just showing you kind of what to do. But yeah. once that leaf is dry, then I can work my dry work on top of that in a layering way. <laughs> Excuse me, Mary Leah. Yes. Um, I totally have never done any watercolor. Okay. I have no idea. Sorry, to, I don't want to slow this process. No, you're not slowing us down. Okay, but, so we'll um, do it step by step. Because I've never even done any. My husband had given me um, a watercolor art set, and he has since passed, but I wanted to make use of it. So, okay. I, so I just wanted to tell you that. Okay, and what is your name? Bev. Pardon me? Beverly. Okay, Bev. Bev. So, Bev, this mm -hmm. is your something like this probably is what you're using. Okay? I've never even used it. I have to figure out what I'm doing. Sorry okay, so, about that. Okay, so you want to get a little practice piece of paper near you. Okay. And then your set is semi-moist. The paints are. And you have to get them wet in order to activate them. Okay? So, I've got water on my brush. Okay. And I'm dipping it into the paint and sort of stirring it around a little bit. Okay? okay. And then the paint is on your brush. Okay. So I'll see your, what I can. Yeah. So with your brush, you're just going to make some marks and you can practice different brush strokes with your brush. Okay. If that is a little bit overwhelming, then just take your brush and make some yeah. marks with I'll it. I'll probably draw it first or try to draw it and then I'll Okay. So let's, let's go back a little bit. Here we go. Here is a leaf. Here's a um one of the petals, or really actually they're leaves, from the poinsettia, and I drew it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill it in with sure. my watercolor. The more okay. paint, excuse me, the more water I use with the paint, the lighter the value is going to be, and the more pigment I use, the stronger the value will be. So here, okay. I have a medium amount of pigment on my brush, and I can fill this in fairly easily here with my paint, okay? okay. That's really very basic. While it's wet, if I want to shade it a little bit, I can take a little more pigment and have, have more pigment on my brush. You can see it's darker. Sure. So okay. now I can touch right along the edge here in places to shade this 
um, okay. leaf a little bit. Okay. Everybody can benefit from this. These are watercolor basics. But when it's wet, I can add deeper values. In other words, more pigment. Okay, well, thank you. Way. Okay, so that's sure. what we're up to. All right. So let's see, let me think a minute. <laughs> Okay. Mary, could I ask you, um, can you mute us all? There's, um, I have some trouble hearing. Okay. And hearing a lot of children in the background. So oh, I'm... yes. And as I explained, we have a class going on next oh, week. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's why um, okay. there are kids, no I didn't a whole hear bunch that. of them. No problem. Okay. Thanks. Like painting class, right? <laughs> right by us. Okay. So that's what you're hearing. All right. Um, well, I have one that I drew, and then I can also do one that is a little bit more freeform. So I'm going to start with yellow, okay? And I'm going to think about my yellow blossoms that are going to go in the center of my poinsettia. Now, I was reading that some people call it poinsettia, and some of us call it poinsettia, and I think that both ways to pronounce it are just fine. <laughs> but I was trying to learn a little bit about that beautiful plant, and they actually are native to Mexico. They're really considered a festive holiday plant, and often they're referred to as the Star of Bethlehem, which is sort of interesting. So, um, Actually, the association with the holidays came around in the 16th uh, century, which was kind of cool. Okay, so here's my little center. Once I paint it, you'll be able to see it. I'm using my yellow right out of my pan paint, and I'm just going to paint these really quite simply. I want to start here. I've seen this done where people start um, with the leaves first, and I just think that this is good to get this done when your brush is fresh and your water's relatively clean. You could put a tad bit of green in here if you want to. And I'm just touching with my brush a little bit of green into the blossoms in the center. Okay, I'll hold it up so you can see. All right, that's where I'm starting. Now we would want this to dry a little bit before we go on, but um, I think we'll be okay. If you have a hair dryer, that might help you today. <laughs> Not for drying your hair necessarily, but for doing a bit of painting. So I'm thinking about the first petals and they are actually the smallest ones. And I'm gonna think about where I want them and I'm gonna draw some stems coming from my center. I'm going to make five of them in a star pattern. Okay. With me? Give me a thumbs up. Lynn, are you with me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're with you. Good. All right. So what I'm going to do next is at these spots where I just made these um, little marks, I'm going to make some um, of the leaf shapes. And that's all I'm doing. And this is with my lightest light. So I have a lot of water on my brush, but not to make a puddle. Okay. And Mary Leah, could I ask you the yellow? It's a little hard for me to see. So are those like just circles? The shapes are circles. Okay, and they're just kind of randomly put down. Um... Yep, let me go back here onto my scrap paper. I'm gonna... right. Okay, whoops, where is that scrap paper? I had it right here, Tom. <laughs> I thought I was painting on it. No problems, I don't want to hold you oh, up. Oh, right here, there it is, okay. I like to have a scrap paper near me anyway, because I like to uh, put my colors down to see what ones I'm gonna use, and that helps me. So um, 
the, the center is really just little circles that are clumped together. And those are those little flower buds in the center of the uh, poinsettia. And I just painted them. Oh, okay. See, inside with the paint. And I added a little bit of green here and there. Whoops, that was a little bit too much green, but I added a little bit of green. <laughs> You can always blot it and remove it, just so you know, with your tissue. Okay, so that's all I did in the center. Great, and remind me the colors you're using um, this, on the right. This is yellow, okay, yellow. And if you're using um, two paints, you can use any yellow that you have, um, cat or, um, I was, I have lemon yellow, which I like to use, so, okay. Great, thanks. There we go. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to finish this up here and paint some of these petals. It got a little bit too dark for me. If it gets too dark, you can pull a little bit of it out and use it in the next petal. So it's sort of like a star to start with, isn't it? And what color is the pink? And I didn't catch that. Is that like quinacridone or? This is the pink out of this Yarka paint set. Oh, okay. So it's right hard here. to know the exact color. Okay. Yes. And in my classes, we talk about the exact colors. We go Perfect. into a lot of color mixing. Um, and I would often use the tube paints, but today I'm Basically, that I like alizarin crimson, which is another really beautiful um, color to use for the poinsettia. Okay, so I can also go back here and get some of the shading done on these. So I'm touching my brush to the base of the leaf. I'm calling them leaves. We often think of these as flowers, but they're actually um, the leaves of the plant. Okay. All right. So I would want these to start to dry a little bit and I'm gonna move, move ahead. And I'm thinking about the petals. I keep calling them petals, but you know what I mean. The leaf shapes that are in between here that I'm gonna do next. And I'm gonna get these a little bit darker. So I can get a darker red or I can just use more pigment from my set. And I'm going to create some right in here. I'm going to leave some white space between these because I don't really want them to run together, which is what happens with watercolor. Right? We all know that. Okay, they'll run together if they um, the, the paint will merge with <clears throat> with the other paint. I guess is the right way to say it. <laughs> right, Tom? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. I, making some bigger petals here. Now, I didn't wet this before I did it because it's such a very small, small area. Um, that's another technique that we get into and learn about. But I'm just working these little petals here as I go around. They're a little darker than I wanted it to. Okay, so we want these to um, get dry. I'm going to get one more in here. So they're not all the same. They're, you know, they're all a little bit different. Some are lighter and some are a bit darker. Watercolor always will, will dry a little bit um, lighter, just so you know that. Okay.
So we're kind of thinking of doing these in sections. In other words, one, one little bit at a time. It needs to dry a bit more. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm gonna jump in over here to this one that I already um, drew so that you can catch up a little bit if you're, if you're needing to. And I'm gonna do the same process on this one. And this is the one that I drew it out first. So, so you can see me do this two times. <laughs> Again, I'm just using the paint right out of this paint set and using my lighter value for the leaves. Okay, you have till two, right? Exactly, a little later. Yeah. Okay, so we think of value in watercolor as meaning our light values and our dark values. Whoops. And really that's just controlled by the amount of water that we use. And if you have a question, I think you can um, do it in the chat, right, Tom? Yes. And and we'll, we'll see if we can answer those questions for you. There are a lot of ways to do this um, flower. I've done it in many different ways. Um, you can do one that's really fun and a little bit loose. And, you know, that's uh, a little different technique. So we're just doing this one today. Um, I'm painting around here so that these other petals are going to be lighter here and a bit darker here. But I've left some white space, so don't worry if you end up having to make that happen, if you end up having to do that. And you know, because we're, things are drying pretty quickly actually, so it depends a lot if the heat's on, it's gonna make things dry, dry faster, isn't it? Absolutely. And the lack of humidity. Yeah, exactly. It's just been so dry. Okay. <laughs> okay, so because, like I said, this is such a small space. I'm not gonna wet it first, but many times we'll wet the, the shape of the leaf or whatever it is we're gonna paint. We often wet it first. In other words, we get it nice and damp, but because like I said, this is such a small little space, I don't think I need to do that. I'm choosing not to do that. So you can see we're working from the lighter value to the darker value, and we're sort of cutting in or working around um, the shapes that we just made. I'm going to skip over here. This is my other one and it is still pretty wet. Um, and I guess I better just let that dry a little more. <laughs> okay. Um, Tom's air drying it for me. Okay. So I'm going to cut in even darker here with my paint. If you want to get your paint a little bit darker, you can mix your, um, your red with a little bit of blue or purple, and that will get you a stronger pigment, a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm gonna cut in around these other um, leaf shapes that I've made. So use the pressure um, with your, when you're applying the paint, you can use more pressure to help uh, get the, um, using the, the flat part of the brush, right? The barrel, that's the barrel. what it's called. 
And you know, a lot of those brushes will hold plenty of pigment, plenty of paint. So you can get quite a bit done with what you've got on your loaded on your brush there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now remember that with watercolor we often work in layers. So when this is dry, I can go back and add the details and I can also get darker if I need to or choose to. So I'm going to be doing that, but it needs to be dry first. Okay. It would need to definitely be dry before I try and put those the green leaves in there. Right. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, that's good, thanks. Okay, so that can dry. And I'm gonna attempt this other one now. <laughs> so it's sort of good for you because some of you may be working um, this way and some of you may have done a drawing first. So it's kind of nice that you can see a couple different ways to do things. Okay, so I'm gonna make another leaf here behind this one and I can probably do the this method here of um, doing a little bit of an outline and only because it's such a tiny little area I won't get a hard edge. Okay, that's the only time I would want to do that. Okay. All right. So it's kind of cool because this darker leaf shape that I made is surrounding the lighter one and it helps us to see it, it makes it pop. Okay. All right, so we're going to do another one right here. And it's again, it's behind my first leaf shape that I made. There we go. That's a cute little one. You noticed I do have one at home, one of these plants at home, and it's kind of fun to look at it and see that you know all of these are different, they're not all the same. The, the um, leaves and they have all kinds of varieties. I think I read that there's like a hundred varieties of these plants. Kind of cool. I might need to go a little bit darker in some spots, but I can always go back and get get darker if I need to. So brushes can be used to not only paint with, but you can kind of do some line work with them. Um, you can kind of draw with them because they come to a really nice um, point. So that's kind of a nice feature to think about. So the water that you use helps the paint to flow. You don't want to work too dry. You want to have enough water on the brush so that the paint flows nicely for you. Okay. I think I'll pop another one over here now. So really, this is sort of a study in values, isn't it? When we think about it, it's working. I'm pretty much working with the same pigment. I'm just changing the value by the amount of pigment that I use working from light to dark, okay? And you can use your brush now if these parts are dry. If these are dry, you can use your brush to do a little bit of shading on some of these leaf shapes. And I'm just making a little bit of a mark on the side with the tip of my brush. Mary Leah, could you explain to us in terms of the shading? Do you mean like with the way the light hits it or just um, that the leaves have yeah, so, so yeah, just creating a little bit of um, shadow by 
putting my, uh, you know, just painting a little bit with my brush on the edge of something and helping to make a softer edge then so that it flows and it's not a hard edge. Um, and yes, it does have to do with the light. That's a good question. Okay. Very good question. I think I'll do a few more leaves on this. That go over in here. I mixed a tiny bit of purple in with my red to get um, a deeper color here. So if you want to do that, you can try that. If you don't have purple, you could use blue. That would work. Just to get a little bit darker here and there. Oops. I want that to be bigger, so I'm going to go with this bigger. Here we go. Because the, the leaves on this plant get bigger and bigger, don't they, if you look mm -hmm. at it closely. So you can get them bigger as it extends out from the center. Okay. And so Mary Lee, it looks like you're, so you're using the darkest color now for the, for the bottom layer of leaves or bigger leaves. The bigger leaves are my darker color. So I'm working from light to dark. The lighter colors, the lighter value is at the top, and behind it are darker valued, um, the darker values. That's right. Okay. I was going to put another one there, but maybe not. <laughs> okay. I think that needs to come out like this. Okay, so that one turned out not dark, so I can still go in with my darker pigment and get this darker because I laid down an initial wash here. Okay, so it's a little bit darker, so it's nice to have that variation happening in the, the leaves of this beautiful flower. Was it easy for you to do that because it was already wet? Or if it had already been dry, you could have still put on another layer darker? That's right. So there's lots of ways to work with watercolors. Um, one way is to lay down what we call a wash. And that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm going to get it darker with more pigment into this wash because it's, it's wet. That's one way to, to work. The other way, another way to do it, I should say, is to um, is to wait for things to dry and then do another layer over top of it. And then you can darken it um, if you want to at that point. You can, you know, add lots of different aspects to it as far as detail work. So I hope that answers your question. That's a good question. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I can make marks in this with my brush if I want to do some um, of the veins if I want in these leaves at this point. I can do that while it's wet or I can wait till it's dry. Whoops. I can wait till it's dry. I'll show you on this. Okay. So this one's dry. I can paint over top of this and make it darker if I want to. I can work on the dry surface or I can wet it first with clean water. That's another way to work on it. Put some clean water on it and then add more pigment. So it darkens it. See? So those are different ways to work. Another way to work I hope I'm not confusing anybody, <laughs> but 
Another way to work is just to use some relatively clean water, okay, and let it um, sort of seep into the uh, paper and then add your color. So that gives you a whole different look, okay? Gives you a whole different look. That's called wet and wet. Okay, all right, let me go back to this one here. How are we doing, Tom? Um, quarter, quarter to two. Okay, so um, this one, let's see. This one needs a little bit more work, I think. Um, I was looking around at home and I found a package of these uh, cards that you can buy, which are really nice watercolor paper cards um, and you can purchase them and do a painting on them and send them out as little gift cards which is kind of cute and nice to do all right let me go back and define a little bit more of these okay so we need to get some leaves in here and this is actually the leaf shape, I would say, about like that. And they're quite large. We can position some of them around in different places and our, around our um, Rinzetta plant that we just painted. I don't want to go into the corner. So I'm going to kind of sneak about maybe right about here. Okay. And I'm just thinking about these leaf shapes that are green. <laughs> and just create those. Now you could draw these first, like I said. And while it's a bit wet, you can get it darker in the base because it would be darker where things are clumped together, right? So darker right in here, and I'm just feeding in a little bit of the darker green into this while it's wet. Now you can, if you want to, make the veins while it's wet, but they're going to be very soft and not distinctive. Um, but you can do it if you want to and try it. You can also wait till it dries and then do it. I put a little more on the side here. So to soften an edge, if you're, I'm going to switch back over here real quick. If you're working on something and you are filling it in, for instance, let's, here's this leaf that I did here. Um, let's say you want to shade it a bit on one side. You see the hard edge that I've created? The way to soften that is to get some clean water on your brush, not too wet, and then run your brush along the edge right next to it, and it will soften the edge so it's not such a distinctively hard edge, okay? So that's a way that you can shade things. We were talking about shading a little bit earlier. Okay. So I'm going to make some more leaves. Here. Any any idea about that nice dark green? Did you just use just regular green or you added something to make it darker? Okay, um, I'm again, I'm using the green out of the, the paint set. There are two greens here. Um, if you have a green and it's not dark enough for you, or if you're using um, hooker's green or ver, um, vermilion, not vermilion, viridian, sorry. Viridian. Oh, yeah. 
you can take that green and mix it with some red and you'll get a nice, nice green, okay? I think I have uh, oh, good questions today. And I think this is hookers. Okay, so here's hookers green. If I want to make it a little bit more, um, not quite so bright, I would add a bit of red to it. Oops. I'll get my leaves done here. There. Gets it a little bit darker. You see that? That's a nice green right there. Okay, so we can mix our colors um, definitely when we're working. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so this started to dry on me. I still can go back in and get it darker. And it's flowing nicely because this is still quite damp. Now some of you might end up with a white background. You can leave it white. You don't have to fill it in. Um, or you could choose to, to uh, make a pretty background. If you're going to do a background, then you want to wait for things to dry before you do that, okay? Otherwise, it's all going to run together. So I'm getting that dark right in there right now. Okay. And I think I need some more leaves on this one. <laughs> All right. Looking a little, little lonely. A little sparse. Move like that. Okay. Whoa, that's a dark one. Okay. <laughs> that's okay to have some dark. If if you get something too dark and you're not happy with it. All you have to do, I'll show you what to do. Oops, I'm not real thrilled with that, but okay. You can take some clean water and actually pull the color out if you're not happy with that. I think I'm gonna have this go here. It's five to two. No. Uh -oh. Okay. Some of these leaves are not, um, they have some curviness to them, just so you know. You probably have a poinsettia at your house. You can look at it. You can always go back, I think, and watch these um, tutorials. Oh, your, yeah, they should be. Right? There. Okay, so I'm adding some line work on top here. And all I'm doing is drawing with the tip of my brush and creating some uh, of the veins on the on the part that's it's relatively dry. Okay. Now I would think that we would want to get in here with a little bit of the green because the, the leaves are, some of them are popping up in through here. So you can do that. I'm just adding a little bit of the green up there towards the center. I'm up on the tip of my brush. It kind of helps to accentuate it a little bit. I'm also doing just a little line work with my brush with the green. And you could make some little, um, or you could make some holly on this if you wanted to, that'd be kind of fun. Or uh, just some sprigs of, let's see here, some little sprigs of um, oh, a little pine. 
And that I just drew with my brush. And I can start up here and do some little very fine lines. And you can kind of sprinkle these around and make it a little bit bigger as they go towards the, whoops. <laughs> I need a smaller brush, I think. Right, Tom? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, you guys get the idea of, of some of those cute little um, pine branches. And you could add some little bits of holly here and there. That'd be kind of cute. Or holly berries. It's not a good Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll take a minute after I done here um, take a little minute to show our our work I think we might end up going over just a tad I do want to go back in here and show you um, that we might need to get a bit darker in between some of these lighter petals so I've got my pigment on my brush and I'm going in here a little bit between some of these um, petals just to get it a little bit darker. And I'm gonna spread this a bit here with my water. Okay, so I darkened these a little bit, that's okay, because I really want these center ones to pop a bit. You could even make another, <laughs> another leaf, couldn't you? Just so you can see how to do that if you, if you choose to. And Mary Lee, I'm trying to figure out, so around the yellow, you added a little bit of green just to make it pop a little bit? Or? Yeah, I just added a little bit of green um, right in here. Right. Judy Davis. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi. <laughs> yep, so just a little bit of green right around here, just sort of intermittently placed in there. I think it looks, it looks beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's really sweet. Um, Thank you. <laughs> okay, well that one got a little bit dark, but I can just fix it. Yeah, it'll dry lighter. But that's right. I have to remember that. <laughs> Very noisy over there. <laughs> That's You're <okay>. mean. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So you know you can always, like I said, add a background or just leave it plain. Um, you could add more leaves. I'm going to put a little background on here just so that you can see oops, see how to do it. The time went so quickly. I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to make a little bit of a um, yellow wash in the background. For those of you who want to do that, I would say use clean water and dampen the area first. Now, you want to make sure stuff is dry before you try and do that. Okay, so I'm dampening here. I don't have to fill it all in. It can just be a little bit here and there. It doesn't have to be a solid background. Mary Leah, I need to leave and I want to thank you so much again oh, for your you're lovely classes. And I'm looking forward to the one that starts in January. Oh, are you joining us? I sure am. Oh, good. Would, would well, not well, miss it. Great. So we'll, you know, we're going to have fun. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, well, happy Sorry, happy holidays to everybody. Thank happy you. holidays to you. I'd <laughs> like to remind everybody, starting January 11th with drawing, that we're starting up the Vitality Art classes again, and you can get additional information for that on our website at rumriverartcenter.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have drawing and watercolor and acrylic painting and hand-built pottery. That's right. And if you, um, except for the pottery, you can um, still take the classes if you live out of state. We've got a lot of people 
from other parts of the country that are taking classes. So that's really exciting. Everyone's welcome. So um, I'm just putting a little yellow background in the back here. Katie says, thank you so much and happy holidays. Thank you, Katie. Vivian, thank you. I also have to leave to go to a meeting. This was fun and I am joining in January. Okay, great. All right, so Tom is going to turn it over. Or That's not the right word. Tom's going <laughs> to... Sorry. It's okay. Um, Tom's, Tom's going to make it so that you guys could show us your work if you Jesus, choose to. You. How about that? Okay. All right. I got everybody up on the screen. Does anyone want to show their work? We have Ephraim showing. Please remember to unmute. Oh, I need a light. Oh, that's nice, Ephraim. Beautiful. There you go. <laughs> we have Rose. Nice, Rose. We have Jane Wesson over here. Oh, hi, Jody. And Jody. Hi. There's hi. Jane. Nice, Jane. I like it that a lot of you did several of them because you know, you know, you can learn as you're as you're making these, and um, you know, the more it's very you make, nice. the more you. Well, yours came out very nicely. Very nice. Yeah, really nicely, you guys. Could some of you turn on your video, please, if you're wanting to show? Looks like Lori. Uh, Betsy. That's Cole. me. Jane, nice. Lori. Yeah. yeah. Here we go, Coleman. Nice. Very nice, um, Ger Gerald Miller's video. Yeah, nice. Rita. Rita. Very pretty, Rita. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Katie, you want to show us? Katie can't get her video to work. Okay. Betsy, Lori. I can't get it. That's me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't move it. Okay. Anybody else? I think we got everyone who is. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. That was lots of fun. Thank you so much. Have a happy Thank holiday. Um, Thank yep. you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mary Leah. Bye. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>